Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Cosmic Barbecue with me, Matt in the Real World, Mikey J Shields, Jim Dammit of Dinosaur Pile Up, and we've got our bud Dave Brown Sound of Sum 41 fame coming in to hang with us and talk about, well I have actually no idea what we're going to talk about, but, but we're all here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Best intro so, ever. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. Yeah. Oh, man, it's good. it's good to hear from you guys. I think the last time I, I saw you guys, um, uh, you were trying to force pizza down my throat. <laughs> yeah. In a bar, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, wasn't that? Um, oh, shit, yeah, it was. We were in uh, Tufnell Aces. Park. Yeah. Uh, Aces yeah. and Eights, just next to, yeah, Tufnell Park Dome or whatever. What, you, got, you guys had just come over to play the... Uh, the like the mid the sort of sort of smaller shows. Yeah, yeah, we did a because uh, we missed Europe for the uh, Does This Look Infected anniversary tour. We came over yep. and did a, a few small ones. A couple of them worked out, and a couple of them <laughs> and a couple of them didn't. So, but yeah. but like uh, what the one in Paris we were supposed to do uh, after our show, we we went and played uh, the Zenith, which is incredible. Like f- like France, uh, yeah. it has been crazy good to this band for some reason like we just clicked there yeah and uh so yeah. we were we, we did the zenith and then the next day we were scheduled to do uh, a smaller club and uh there was a basically like a protest outside and uh they were saying oh. that um a lot of it started off as a strike against uh transportation but then uh oh. it was said that uh some of the gel jaune came and uh, joined in the protest and it kind of got a little wild from there. And uh, somebody let off yeah. like a, uh, a flashbang bomb. Oh, damn. Oh, and, I remember this. Yeah. 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 And it was just basically this. like our entire crew was in there. Like everybody's ears were ringing. Kids were waiting to get in. Kids were crying. Oh, shit. Shit yeah. like that. And it was just like, it was a point where it was like, okay, well, if we do this show, there's one exit for everybody. So, yeah. If, if anything yeah. were to escalate, anything were to go crazy, the promoter was just like, yo, man, we got one exit. Like, there, there's no way to do this. And so yeah. every party, like every single person involved on that tour and on that show, we were just kind of like, no, this is not a this is not a good idea. This isn't mm. this isn't safe for the kids. So, yeah, uh, I remember that, man. It was like, we've got one exit and I'm using it. <laughs> yeah. And, and then in like, in typical, in typical fashion, it, it was, it, there was, of course, there was a little bit of uh, like, thank you for canceling the show. There's a little bit of like, pussies. Like, yeah, that know, always happens, man. Right. But then it, it was really cool because we, we have a good fan base and um, one guy and especially uh, he came to our defense and was just like, listen, man, like they don't know what it's like to be in Paris for the past like two years. Which, you know, and he's just yeah. like, basically just explained how much it's escalated. He's like, of course, we're used to it. But at the same time, like, what if something did happen? We're like, yeah, man, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Bro. It's always nice when a fan yeah. comes to your defense. Like, yeah, yes. right? yeah, dude, uh, <laughs> yeah. Also, like, you're you're responsible for your fans. So it's you're in a different right. position to those guys anyway. Like, you know, it's your show. The fans are coming to your show. So it's they're your responsibility. So if there is anything that looks like could be unsafe, it's on you. So. I exactly. Kind of, you know. People don't realize like bands these days, we're now like at risk of like you doing something as minuscule as using somebody's photo and not putting a credit up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Somebody just hits yeah. you up and just goes like, all right, man, listen, you use my photo on your Instagram. That's going to run you about 12 grand. <laughs> yeah. More than yeah. we make in a yeah. year. Cool. Right. Yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have used that photo. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna just start God baiting God. bands. I know, but the sweat the sweat and the lights is just looking right, you know? Look like Burt Reynolds on the, the bearskin rug. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, Dave, and that why do I was it I can't was it before that London show or afterwards? We we me I think me and Mikey came and met you uh down at the um pineapple pub in Kentish Town, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. In oh Tuffle yeah, yeah. Park, yeah. I think it was I think it was before because um my oh, yeah. uh I have some cousins that I always always go and visit there, you know, uh yeah. shout outs to Katie and Karis. And now that <laughs> one of the newest members of the family, Paul. 
and uh, yeah, I've just got so I've got a guys. lot of family that I love to to uh, go see when I'm there because uh, nice just like they they used to come over like I've known them since they were babies so now yeah. we we just go out and hang out and and now you guys are like part of that crew with uh, yeah, yeah. without even being asked you're just obligated to come out now. Oh, that's wicked, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's and funny. hopefully many more of your shows will end with uh, you being forced pizza down your neck because they're yeah. the best shows you know i say i say force but it was more just like <laughs> it was it was ali just like caressing my face being like here have pizza <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was it was the most it was gentle yet violating i will say it's good pizza in uh, ace and eight so it is i was yeah i was gonna say actually. yeah, yeah. Yeah, good pizza. At Ace's it is Spades. actually good. What, what's what's the place called? The Ace of Spades or something like that? Aces and uh, eights. Aces and Eights. Yeah, Aces yeah. and Eights. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a good place. Um, hey, uh, Dave. So this, there's a few vague things I want to uh, talk about, like a couple of memories um, and stuff like that. But before we do, I was actually thinking about um, pre this call how funny it is that we know each other now because the first time um we almost met but didn't meet was actually a couple of years back mike and jamie remember when we were playing carolina rebellion i think yes yeah, and, yeah. i remember that vividly ollie's ollie's got a great video from right that. And, uh, oh no way! Yeah, and we played earlier the, on the same stage as you, Dave. And then later that evening, you guys obviously played that stage. I think you, I guess you were headlining it, or I think I think it was that late. So we played it earlier in the day, like in the afternoon, and then a couple of hours later, you guys played, and we um, we hung outside the stage and watched that set, which was actually really dope because. You know, you you guys were playing yeah. all the hits, and we were like, "Fuck, this is this is killer!" And you know, I was actually kind of, I was like, "Fuck, this is like shredding." But the one thing I remember particularly, yeah. <laughs> the one thing I remember particularly was uh, seeing Yoshi uh, walking around. He was like, he was kind of crowd controlling, I guess, the guys on the side of the stage. Um, and I remember thinking, it's just funny now because obviously we know you guys now and know Yoshi and everything. But I remember. Yeah, thinking when I was watching him do his thing, I was like, "Fuck yeah, you wouldn't." He just looks like a serious fucking dude. Like, I don't know. He like you should want to fuck with him, I guess. The thing is, like, he's so mentally strong. Yeah. As far as like, uh, right? He's so mentally strong as to what he okay. can do with with his voice. Yeah. Right. That he just like he. Oh God, man. Like I've watched him go to someone, uh, go up to them in their ear and just be like, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're going to have to, uh, blah, 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 blah. And that's really all I got from the conversation. Cause he kind of started whispering in the guy's ear <laughs> and, and then they just, they just yeah. disappeared around the corner. And no, like yeah, no right. fight, no ruckus, nothing like that was heard. But um, yeah, eventually they they come back, and he just puts his hand on the dude's shoulder, says one last thing to him, and the dude just runs across the street and jumps into a pile of bushes. <laughs> <laughs> for, for all the listeners listening, Yoshi is uh, some forty one's kind of what, what? What's his job title, Dave? What would you? What, what's his like role? On the on the touring team. I mean, his official title is like uh, he does security for Derek, and but um, yeah, but he does right. so much more. Like the the dude is like yeah, like, totally. he's literally like a uh, like a if I could say like put a label on it, it would be like quality of life. Like that he just yeah he just improves everybody's mood. He's a good dude, you know. He yeah. says things like, uh, okay, if you miss this day at the gym, that's that's. That's just me, you know, being a day stronger than you. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I, I remember seeing him on the tour and being like, yeah, that's not somebody I just want to get, sort of say the wrong thing around or, you know, no. like do anything that might piss anybody off. And then a couple of days later, so having a chat with him in like catering and he was just fucking the loveliest. Yeah, dude. he's lovely. Like, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. There's nothing. Yeah, there's there's nothing that can that can really go wrong unless you're being an absolute ass to yeah. Yoshi. I remember. Yeah, I remember that. Um, that uh, another reason I remember that uh, Carolina Rebellion show and seeing you guys pre knowing you was obviously the first thing was seeing Yoshi doing his thing and you know thinking about that. But the other thing was. Uh, the fact that that was my first experience of um, uh, kind of, you know, kind of losing the back end on stage. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> 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 Earlier that- losing the back end. Yep. <laughs> so, so we've only been doing this podcast a few episodes, and now there's two stories of members nearly shitting themselves. Yep. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. So... The, re- the reason why that was that really sticks in my memory was yeah because we we watched some forty one side of stage and it was dope and um, earlier in the day we'd we'd we got in and we went hit catering and I remember catering that day being particularly maybe kind of gnarly and uh, it was a hot right yeah yeah I do remember that yeah I do remember that yeah it was a hot day and yeah and that tent you know just near the stage we played yes yeah. it was so hot in there it was really hot and I remember yeah. I remember eating it and being like this is a bit ropey and it's really fucking hot I wonder if that's okay and lo and behold it wasn't okay <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember literally as we were, as like we were walking on uh, yeah sure you know I shit myself I I, I did a little shit. <laughs> but, but oh, I had no time. Yeah, and I and then I then we had to there was no time we were going on stage. It was, you know, just a little. I'm not sorry I'm not talking a I'm not talking a whole load. It wasn't the mother load, but but it was enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you weren't shaking it down your <laughs> It was oh. enough to know it was enough to know as a fully grown man walking on stage to two thousand people having shit himself. You know? <laughs> and uh so that I did that and that was you know what? When I came off stage I was pretty proud of that. I was pretty proud of that experience because we Dude, crushed that. That's show. another thing. What? Yeah. yeah, that's another thing people don't understand. Is like, like uh, they yes, we have to go out there. Yeah, and do it because like these people are there. They're paying their their money to see a show. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're they're basically paying to be entertained. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. Shitting ourselves—that's just one of that's a, that's a that's yep. a casual casualty of war. It's part of the job. You take the rough with the smooth, man. You <laughs> exactly <know>? right. <laughs> dude, I had at a time once where we were playing Cleveland. I can't remember the the name of the venue, but we were just there uh, recently. Uh, I think uh, 2019 uh, fall, and I remember this place because it's right by a uh, vintage uh, guitar store. Yep that uh, I bought one of my amps at. But I remember playing uh, Paint for Pleasure. Yeah. And we were sitting there just holding holding on to it before we went out for it. And I had a little rumble in my gut. And I'm like, oh, ah, okay, get just fucking... No, that's just the warning sign. <laughs> yeah, I was You're just like, like, no. I was like, suck it down, suck it down, go out there, do a good <laughs> job. Right? So we get out there, we do Paint for Pleasure, and all of a sudden, I've got a hit that high note. Ooh. So we we yeah. So we get to the Satan is his name. And back yeah. then, when I was when I was young, I had spry vocal cords. I could go up a notch, like hit a uh, I don't know whatever note it is, the highest note I could hit. I mean, it's I think it's a little high. bit. <laughs> it's like it's like two. It's two notes below Mariah Carey's maximum vocal <laughs> yeah. cord, I believe. <laughs> two notes below <laughs> dolphin range yeah, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> so i hit and i hit it i hit it so hard but <laughs> i swear to god i felt like it was a good like 83 percent humidity <laughs> in my fucking in my underpants it just it would just and, slide out you wouldn't even you wouldn't even uh, realize right. you wouldn't even know <laughs> dude i was just like something happened something uh. happened and we've got to like <laughs> got to do the big ending with just like and me just thinking like the whole time like oh my god there is a fucking <laughs> turd in my pants and dude this was there's back in the days of like those wide ass dickies shorts and oh, boxer dude. shorts yeah so there's nothing oh, yeah. there's Fuck. nothing stopping oh. this thing from just 
to oh, rolling yeah, out. The train has left like the a, station, bro. Like a muddy, yeah, like a muddy tumbleweed. <laughs> Just <laughs> amazing, dude. But, oh, but luckily, it was just like luckily it was just hot, humid air. Yeah. And at, <laughs> yeah, at that point, I was like, you know what? I cannot be eating like a madman before I go yeah, on dude. stage. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad yeah. yours was just hot here. Yeah. Uh, mine was not. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was not what mine was. <laughs> Dude, that's that's wild. Yeah. That's wild. I remember. I remember that festival. Uh, the food being bad as well because I it actually hit me earlier uh, in the day, and I remember. I remember being like desperate for the loo, and I think we yep. were on stage in like I think like 15 minutes or so. So I was like, right, I've, yep. I'm just gonna have to go. Um. Otherwise, I was going to be in for a fucking Matt episode of just shit myself. Just accepting <laughs> yeah. it. I mean, I'm a, I'm a grown man. I took responsibility. I was like, I'm going to go. Obviously, all the toilets are full. So I'm looking around. I'm sweating. I haven't gone too far from our oh, trailer. Oh, shit. I remember this. I'm I do. I remember this too. I, I, was, I, wait, I was witness to this. Like, like yeah. oh, this whole scene unfolding, I was witness to. Yeah. I can, continue, Mike. I this, this only gets better. I can't go too far. The time's ticking. I've got the cold sweats. And I was like, I just need to go. I can't. There's no way I can hold on any longer. And I've just seen the salvation of this free toilet at backstage of this festival right opposite our cabin but it was a, it was a girl it was only for girls oh only damn it was the girls toilet and i was like yeah. fuck it and it was a single cubicle was like, single, single private cubicle girls toilet wait no did we did any of us meet at the uh at the bathrooms for that festival no we we didn't meet oh, you guys okay then. no i think i think ages i don't think we was, did i think ages were there Maybe it was maybe because I remember meeting a British gentleman at the toilet. Oh, okay. And we were we were both wa- we were both washing our hands, and we were just kind of like, "Wow, this is like this is crazy because it's just kind of like summer camp." Like to be honest, Dave, it, it could have been me, but I was in such a state <laughs> that I needed to find. I need to I need to finish this because I I ran to the toilet. I went in there. I was like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna go. I, I won't be that long." Whatever was raging inside me was quite bad, so I was yeah, I was, I was in there well. for a while, Damn. and and it was really hot anyway, so it wasn't doing anything for the the smell and the feeling of yeah. in that little <laughs> little cubicle. And and you know, everyone should be aware of we were deep into a tour. The catering was bad that day. It was conditions were perfect for it to be completely impossible, oh, disgusting yeah. in that room. You know. Oh yeah, it was. It was one of the one of the worst things I've ever done to a toilet. I was not proud in any way, shape, or form. I mean, you know, when it's so bad, when you're almost gagging, that, that's you know. So, so I quit. I quickly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm doing my thing, and then I, <laughs> the last thing you want to hear when you're doing your thing is somebody trying to get into yeah. the toilet. Oh shit! And that's exactly that's exactly <laughs> what happened, right? And I was like, this is just for women and there's a girl out there trying to get in and then suddenly i hear another voice i'm like shit there's two there's two out there maybe maybe i can just wait it out yep. knowing full well that i've got to be on stage in like five minutes or whatever I was like, i'll just wait it oh. out <laughs> uh so i'm in there i'm just fucking waiting 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 and i'm like okay enough time's passed now it's been like an- another sort of five minutes or so i'm like i'll, I'll just fucking try uh, try and leave but matt's been watching me the whole time. <laughs> I've been perched on the, the little walkway balcony thing of our cabin, which which is about thirty meters, looking directly across this little bit of greenery between all the cabins, looking directly across at this private girl's toilet the mic is in and has been in for at least fifteen minutes. And slowly, this is the, this is the best thing. It was such a a wondrous <laughs> thing to observe. Slowly, as Mikey's in there doing his thing. Uh, there was a whole, throughout the day, there was a whole gang of those kind of like monster energy, like model girls promoting monster energy or whatever. They were promoting some drink. Yeah. Like very attractive, like all branded up in the, in the, in the brand's clothing or whatever. Mikey's in there doing his thing. Deep in it. Yeah. He's deep in it. And yeah. more. And Matt knows exactly oh, what's I, going on. I know on exactly there. what's happening. And more <laughs> and more, every couple of mins, another one of these 
woman <laughs> appears and is waiting for the loo. Till until there's about six <laughs> six stunningly stunningly attractive <laughs> women <laughs> all waiting for this one cubicle. Be like yeah. you know six like, girls of crazy, a mask. crazy chicks and and they're all <laughs> waiting for this one room and I can hear them all talking like yeah, someone's been in this for ages like I can't get in, I'm busting and stuff. Little do they know <laughs> it's our boy Mikey. <laughs> 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 I should have called you. I should have called you, man. Being like, you are in so much trouble. <laughs> I mean, I can't say anything. I'm in there hoping that they just disperse so I can get out. <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, I haven't heard anything for a little while. Maybe it's maybe it's okay. Maybe they've gone and I can just quickly sneak out. So I open the door and just see these six models and I can smell what's behind me. The look, the look on their faces of horror as it wafts over them and uh, like, apologetically sort of sneaks past them. Oh, my God. I was I was shocked, man, not to see just not like one, but six six girls as they all sort of went in to go and do their like makeup oh thing they were doing together. I, and it was so bad that I, I remember they turned around <laughs> and didn't go in. The shame, dude. The shame. Oh god. Oh Mikey. Oh, it was bad. You know what? You know what? The, sure, maybe they were beautiful, yeah. but they probably just turned around, went into the men's and Yeah. Destroyed that place. <laughs> Destroyed it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. They'd have the catering too. They'd have exactly, catering too. right? Yeah. Like, yep. I mean, pretty girls, they definitely they definitely take nasty dumps as well. So, you know, you, yeah. Amen. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe they were going into dump together. I don't know. Maybe they were just going to go destroy know. it. God, never that know. was, yeah, I'll never the game that, dump. that moment, man. It was fucking funny to observe. <laughs> Dude, that is... Just the walk by, yeah, oh, dude. Just the, oh man, the, the feeling of the feeling of shame. It was because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you had to like really face them. You know, it's not like you could run out and then someone goes and finds the crime. You had to literally like look them in the eyes. And I so couldn't sorry. blame it on anybody else. I'd been in there for so long. Normally, you can go out and be like, "Isn't it? It's so, it's so bad when one person ruins it for everyone, isn't oh, it's it?" Bad in here. But I couldn't. <laughs> oh, dude. Dude, yeah, you're you're on you're on some model's Instagram story somewhere, like, <laughs> yeah. Yo, this dude. This yeah. dude took. But you know what? You yeah. know what? I I would take that um, over shitting myself on stage any day of the yeah. week. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just the dude just the fear of like one like shit rolling down your leg yeah two stepping in your own shit <laughs> slipping uh, kicking slipping it around yeah. shit. into the front row and then just like slipping you know on your own just <laughs> grease spotting those shoes because you can't take that shit on a bus no, no. you know your tech comes on yeah. to hand you something he slips, slips in it, in it. You fall yeah. on him. He's injured. You're both rolling around oh, in your God. own shit. Yeah, you're wearing those like you're wearing those like huge like shiny black shoes from Walmart because that's all you can yeah. afford. Yeah, your tour manager's <laughs> trying to drag you off. About, He's slipping yeah. in it. Oh God, yeah. everyone is just covered in shit. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> you just yeah. Like just, nobody's <laughs> eating their dinner while they're listening. Right? To podcast. You know, just <laughs> in, in picture this if you will, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Looking out the back window of the tour bus as your shitty Jordans fade off into the night. That's it. Amazing, dude. <laughs> well, so yeah, we got Dave on the show. What'd you talk about? Well, uh, shit, shitting, shitting ourselves. <laughs> yeah, shit. yeah, we talked about shit for half an hour. Oh, wow, shit. Yeah. That's why. That's why I uh, I end up doing a, a few podcasts for friends because uh, that's usually where it goes. That's where yeah. it goes. I don't know if it's. I don't yeah. know if it's, it's just the best, me. best kind of listening. Could be just me. <laughs> um, Go, Mikey. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's what everybody wants to hear. You said you had some some vague things that you wanted to to find out too. Like, what what were some of the the points you you wanted to hit? Well, I had a uh, thing because I saw on your Instagram. It's mm-hmm. only a short little thing, but I saw on your Instagram when you were at a practice studio and and uh, you were videoing because some kid was playing one of your solos in the practice room and didn't and had absolutely no idea that you were outside videoing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I thought which I thought was rad. I know and like I half of me wanted to be like 
go in there and be like, Ha-ha-ha, you're play you're playing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you go in? But like also like there's there's a part of me that was raised to not be like, hey, your hero's yeah. here. You know what I mean? And it turned yeah, out that yeah, yeah. not going in was better because like the guy was a fan of the band, but he was more learning the song to go uh play a party with buds oh that's cool yeah yeah so it was, it was still like it, it was pretty cool like to to just walk around the rehearsal factory and be like holy shit like we we wrote that that's cool as hell yeah yeah man was that in canada yeah that was in toronto at uh the rehearsal factory on uh it was on it's on richmond and uh oh, yeah man, that's cool. where that's where i always go to rehearse with uh another band i play in called organ thieves do you guys find that you have uh, like the same sort of following in Canada as America, or is it bigger in America? Or? No, I would say probably the smallest places we play are in the USA. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, because the climate in the USA, it's, uh, it's very, um, now you're big, now you're not. Right. So you kind of, with the, the approach that you take with the, the US is just like, if you get big, scrounge, be as loyal as you can to whoever's going to stick with you. But for the most part, yeah. it, it's a very, okay, been there, done that type culture down there, right? So, and it's amazing for newer artists coming in and coming up. That's the bright side to it. But um, if you are kind of like, if you're driven by your ego and you, you're not willing to, to go and play a smaller place than say you played like 10, 15 years ago, you'll never survive in the United States. Like you will never do it. Yeah. Like you, you just, you have to go and play to who's loyal and be loyal to them and, and they'll do the same back to you. But, um, Oh yeah. I mean, we're still on the, now you're not big sort of venues, but one day, oh, dude, one day, trust me, trust <laughs> me, you guys put out, you guys put out another record like you just did. And that you're going to be, you're going to be going, that record still gets spun in my house. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, man. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, about like kind of experience yeah um because obviously like when we release records um you know we go through that experience and like we know how old we are yeah. when we release you know e each of the records and stuff and like what that is like and like the pickup of fans and you know what that experience is like uh, of sort of releasing a record into the world and, and seeing what happens so <laughs> my question is you know what was the experience like for you dave when you guys released All Killer No Filler because obviously, like how, like, how old were you guys then? Like, you know, you were super young. Like, what, you know, what was that experience like for you? All Killer No Filler, we would have, we would have been 20 going on 21, yeah. most of us. Damn, man. You, God, you got to ride oh, that shit. wave when you were 20, 21. Oh, that is sick. We, we rode the end of the old guard of the business. Just, we, crashed into the shore with that thing man yeah like we we literally released a record mm -hmm. uh got big and then everybody in the in industry had to figure out how to deal with napster the next year and like like literally yeah, we yeah. just caught the tail end of that um That's dope. but the as far as the build up to all killer no filler um we built up the whole thing by um by having two albums ready essentially wow. yeah. so we recorded um half hour power which was a bunch of earlier stuff and then we had uh we wrote the next record all killer no filler and there's some songs that were sticking around from half hour that we were like ah oh, we should probably put this on the the new record and we uh we were big fans of uh face to face and uh you know any face to face fans will know that uh you know there's songs that appear on face to face records, you know, that are, you know, three records in a row. So we wanted to kind of record the song summer on every single record that we ever put out because we thought that would, we just thought that would be hilarious. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but we didn't, uh, we, we just, uh, recorded it for, uh, all killer, no filler, but, um, we basically put out half hour power on, um, the mighty, mighty boss tones label, big rig. And right. those guys were, those guys were wow. such a massive help to the development of our band, um, teaching us about touring in the States, uh, just overall, just go approaching things with a level head 
and never letting our egos get the best of, of uh, the situations we were in. So we, we owe like, we owe a lot to those guys. Cause they're kind of like touring dads for us. And you know, <laughs> after amazing. like, yeah, after like, God, it was like, I think it was like 14 months pretty much on the road with like right. a week here and there. And I remember we had a week for Christmas, then we were right back out. And uh, I think in 390 days, I think we played, we were something, we're somewhere around like 270 to 280 shows. And we were out, we were out for 360 days. Oh, shit. It was crazy. And then I remember it was, we, uh, so we got back from that. And then our A&R comes to us and he's just like, well, one of our a a guy named Louis Largent, came up to me and he's just like, well, buddy, now that you're done uh, the first year of uh, actually this impression, he has a really deep voice. He's more like, all right, buddy, <laughs> now, that, <laughs> now that you've done, now that you've done the, uh, the first year of, uh, of touring, like, you've got to understand, like, all killer, no filler, bro. Get ready to work harder than you ever have before. And I was just like, holy shit. Are you serious? Okay. And, and but but then we we're just like, okay, we're game for it. We're good. We're we're you know, we were we were nineteen when he said that to us. So we we're just like, all right, let's go. Let's do it. When you're nineteen, you're like, this is all I want to do anyway. Like this is this is it. Like I wanna be away, I wanna be yeah. busy. How oh. how soon how soon did it like how quick was it from when you released the album? Was it like after the first single dropped or So we you released we released in the spring of uh of two thousand one, I believe. Yeah. And then um, by summertime, we were uh, we were redoing a show at at uh, Randall's Island uh, for Warp Tour, and I remember uh, th- with this story. Like I have literally told this story probably six or seven times now during yeah. the quarantine. <laughs> sorry, and it's not, it's, sorry to make you talk. Wow. It's, 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 <laughs> and don't worry, it's not just me at the end of my driveway on a milk crate. It's like actual <laughs> proper outlets to tell the story. We'll but, tell you about uh, our bad yeah, name yeah. origin after this. Don't you worry. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> but yeah, like we we uh, we showed up for the show. Um, uh, we were on our first bus, so at this point, the bus was just absolutely annihilated. So it's like getting yeah. we'd get off the bus as soon as we could. Um, we go to set up on stage, get there and the whole label's there. And then a bunch of our, like, kind of like our heroes that we grew up listening to, like were there yeah. as well. And, um, we look out onto the crowd and the crowd's kind of big. And, uh, we, there was, I remember there was a, uh, a setup of merch tents at the side stage for this one where the, um, the merch kind of almost intersected with the sound booth. You had like maybe like a 20 foot gap. And uh, I remember as we played, the crowd just kept on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then as soon as we started the first note of fat lip, yeah, the crowd just erupted. And I just, I looked up because it kind of took me by surprise and it was just, all the way to the tree line and That's we're talking like is. this was the first time we'd oh, ever fuck. seen that many people singing every single word and there was a circle pit that was so large that it was going around the merch tents no and way. you just like yeah like you look into the merch tents and people are like holding on to stuff making sure nobody's snatching vinyls all this all these beautifully set up merch tents and it just looked like chaos out there and like yeah it was just like this moment for all of us where we were like holy yeah. shit you're like this is you, something like yeah like this all this hard work has is like actually doing something and then and then of course in true fashion like mm. lewis largent comes up to me afterwards he's just like see bro i told you <laughs> <laughs> actually no act his he w- he wasn't a bro guy. That was another A and R. His thing was, 
Dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would always be saying stuff like that. But yeah, man. But th- th- it was just such a such a huge moment and such a such a rad point in time. It was so it was huge in the UK. Like I can't even overstate how massive that album was over here. I remember like hearing. It. I remember seeing the videos for the first time before I'd heard anything, and just thinking they were so fucking fun and yeah, sick, man. dude. Th- the UK actually, um, there's a story behind that too, because we were set up to go to the UK with Blink. Right. And um and nine eleven happened. Oh, oh damn. So so Blink was like, Listen, we're not going over. Like this is it's not safe. And we were just kinda like, Well listen, man, like we can't wait. Like totally. and I have no idea how this was exchanged between agents, but uh it caused a rift between the two bands. Yeah, that's a bummer, man. Oh, shit. So, and yeah, and then once we got over there, um, there were publications being like, yeah, you know, fucking the, the publications were like Blink-182 are, are, are being babies and Sum 41 are real men <laughs> and they, they flew over despite what's going on. It was just like, oh my God, like, and it c- caused such... Oh, dude. A long drought and a long, like, almost conflict between the two bands. You know, even though, like, we we were sitting there and we were just kind of like, what do you do? And we were so young that we didn't know that you could do stuff like, no, that's not the truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? We just uh, we just were kind of like, oh, God, all these people are making up all this shit, like, what do we do? Oh, and we're just like, I guess we just put our head down and keep going. The British press love and, to make uh, massive rivalries out of nothing, man. It's classic. You know, you know what? Overall, overall, I think it's just reporters all over the world that truly want to, um, instead of like um, writing a story, they want to make a story. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a, uh, there's almost like a, uh, an association with, with, uh, what people do that, uh, gives them a self importance. And that's awesome because it, it gives them a confidence to be who they are and stop me if I'm not making sense. But I think that sometimes, um, a bias can be yeah. presented when writing or mm-hmm. interviewing somebody that can like, ultimately affect the Amazing. the piece that they're doing in uh in a way that kind of like uh just forces their opinion on the reader mm-hmm. yeah so when you're basically like you know it's almost like a google search like you're gonna find something if mm-hmm. you're looking for it yeah and i think that's one of the things that just just kind of like destroyed our our relationship with Blink for a while. Did you guys pay a lot of attention to any of the, the, the press that was going on or were you just sort of single-mindedly focused on like life on the road? Because I know that can be quite that, consuming as it is. Well, that's the thing. Like we figured we figured out that this was going on maybe, oh God, like I think it was one of the times that I walked up to uh, to Mark and Sky at, uh, at the Metallica Icons and I gave Sky yeah. a hug, and Mark just gave me this look like he wanted to fucking mm, murder me. Oh, <laughs> and I and I would just like backed off, and I was like, "Holy shit!" What, like, and then all of a sudden, like, it just kind of got. And I'm always the last one to figure out anything. <laughs> like, I had no idea the thirteen. I had no idea the thirteen voices B sides were coming out until they were out. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so like. I go and they're like, yeah, man, like Blink's like super mad at this. Like I'm talking to everybody in the band. They're like, yeah, like the, the whole, like that whole tour to Britain, like really fucked up our relationship with Blink. And it was like, oh, for real? Cause I just, I just like, I just hugged Mark's wife in front of him. They're like, oh, oh shit. That was a different time that you couldn't just jump on social media and be like, this is bullshit. Like we're all cool. Like, yeah. Yeah, man, you you had to go to an internet cafe and open up your MySpace page. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fucking hell, MySpace. <laughs> um, so, so Noodles was telling us about how you guys left your CDs like, all over his house at a party or something. So, 
that like he'd keep on finding them. Or was it Dexter's house? <laughs> One of them. Um, oh no, dude. Okay. About that. So we were we're actually tracking all killer no filler. And um Man, anybody listening to this podcast is going to be like, yo, Dave loves the sound of his own voice. No, no, dude, we got you on to talk, man. <laughs> yeah. So we, um, our producer at the time, Jerry Finn, rest in peace. It's just such an amazing producer. Um, brought us tons of things, like, like absolutely lifted punk rock in the 90s to another level. Um, and he was doing all killer no filler for us and he's like listen offspring guys are having a uh are having a barbecue at dexter's house we're gonna go see him right so we're like okay and you didn't know them at this point or yeah and he's just like he mentions in passing he's just you might as well just bring a couple cds pass it off to him yeah right and this was like this was jerry like seriously hooking us up with the Orange County scene, which we grew up listening to. So it was just like a massive treat to go and like be around the Vandals, you know, be around Offspring and a whole bunch of bands that were on Nitro and Kung Fu at the same time. So, uh, and it was to hang out in a cool atmosphere, right? Like around family and stuff like that. So us being us back then, we decided we would bring four boxes of CDs (laughs) because we were just in this like, we were those kids that like we were playing a show two hours away we would drive the two hours a week in advance flyer go back halfway and flyer again and we would just go 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 right so we're like yeah yeah three boxes of cds that'll do it (laughs) so we (laughs) we drive out and we each have a box of cds and uh cone and i had to split one so we are just taking these CDs. We're like, hey, hey, Dexter, here you go. Here's our band. One down, right? We got uh, 70, <laughs> 74 down. more to go. <laughs> so, so we're like, we're just like, what are we going to do with the other 74? And Steve's like, oh, let's just like, let's put them around his house. And all of a sudden that, that turned into like, oh, my God. It would be hilarious. It was hide these CDs everywhere in the house. So for the next 20 years, he's finding these motherfuckers all over the place. Dude, we put one in his fucking toaster. Okay. We put, we, you know, like, have you ever heard of the game Hide the Duke? No. Okay. It's no. where you take, it's, it's where you take a shit in somebody's toilet top tank, the top tank of the toilet. Oh, an upper oh, that's decker. called an upper decker. Yeah, 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 an upper decker. Yeah, exactly, right? So we put like a CD in there. We took, oh my God, we took a potted plant out. So like we were holding this plant by the roots. We put a CD under there. In the, at the odd time that, you know, like whoever does the plants in their house is like, oh, let's replace that plant. Oh, wow. This is great. This is great. Another <laughs> CD, honey. Yeah, <laughs> that's, you know, that's number 68 of 75. Do you know how many have been found? No, I don't. Because I that imagine, be fucking great. I imagine. They're all on eBay. Yeah, I imagine at some point Dexter was just like, let's just move. Like, some 41 <laughs> has ruined our house. <laughs> like, we have plumbing. This whole house yeah. is more CD than house. The kitchen set on fire. <laughs> The bathroom exploded, all because of these fucking CDs they hit everywhere. Let's just move. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we even put one on a ceiling fan blade. So that nice, when man. the ceiling fan got started up, it would just fly somewhere. <laughs> like, and that, we were just so clueless that we were just like, oh, he's going to love this. <laughs> like, well, No. <laughs> well, I guess it worked, you know. You guys are, you guys are good buds. So, yeah, they they ended up taking us out on some some early shows, and uh, yeah, they were they were really good. And I remember I used to sell merch back then too, and their merch guy gave me a couple uh, great tips about ripping off the house. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. You can tell us after this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, 
Well, we've been on for an hour now. I think that's our, our standard length, unless uh, you guys wanted anything uh, else to add. I mean, I was just about to add how, again, incredibly freaking hot I am. I can't wait to start doing this podcast in my studio with you guys there, so I don't have to be under this goddamn duvet. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I just <laughs> fucking it's part of my can't, idea, you know? Yeah. I feel like a piece of cheese being melted every time. <laughs> it's disgusting. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was, I was expecting one of you to yell, get out! <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody coming in your room. Yeah. It's kind of it's it's when we hit the 60 minute mark, I, I, I'm kind of like, okay, it's okay for me to be like, I'm, to like say, okay, I, I'm done. I've had it. I've had enough. Yeah, I'm wrapping up now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got listen. You guys do this once a week. You guys are gonna be like boxer shredded. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Just with the sweat. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, the, oh, yeah. The, my bed is just a different color to when I started doing these podcasts. But that's just from just from the sweat, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that is... That's what that's what hard work. That's what hard work and dedication looks like. All right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up now, guys. Oh, Dave, man. dude, thanks so much for jumping on with us. Uh, thanks so much, man. Cool yeah, thank you, you, man. And, uh, oh, guys, it was it was great to talk to the three. Of you. And you know, it, it's just great to even hear about you. Be a part of this, man. It, it's uh, it's oh, awesome. Fuck yeah, dude. Thank you, dude. Killer, man. Well, I want I want to hear. I mean, we'll do it again wow. at some point. But I want to hear about the next fence you build or whatever. <laughs> Next yeah, year. yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, trust me. And th- next time it'll be on camera, right? So I won't be in yeah, like a red pair of track pants. Yeah, yeah. And, and just, <laughs> I, I won't be. Com- I will be completely naked. Yeah, uh, in my you know duvet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, st- Matt, Matt will still be completely naked, just on camera. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Just with like a disproportionately large blur. <laughs> and yeah, and dude, my dude. And, I'm telling you, like building, I feel bad for Marshall because my pits smell like, my friend told me once about this massive shit he took at Carolina Rebellion. <laughs> and that's what I imagine my pits smell like right now. Uh, all right, guys, on that, on that note. <laughs> all right, guys, lots of love. <laughs>